Um, I hope everyone's new year has started off on the right foot. Um, I want to thank God for allowing us to um, enter into this new season, into this new phase, amen. And I hope and pray that everyone's mindset is in the right place, amen. Um, but if not today, I want to help you get your mindset in the right place. Um, today's lesson title uh, will be Kingdom Mindset, amen. And um, I'm going to be starting in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, uh, and I'm going to read 1 through 3, amen. Um, Psalms, chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. Again, our lesson title today is Kingdom Mindset or Kingdom Mentality. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, we thank you. We bless your name for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the blood that he shed on Calvary for our sins. And, and for that, Lord God, we are able to come boldly before your throne of grace to receive help in our time of need. To Heavenly Father, every day, every hour, every minute of the day, we need you. We need your help because we can do nothing without you. We can accomplish nothing in our own strength. And right now, Lord God, I decrease so that you can increase in me, Lord God. I pray that your spirit takes over me and operates through me, Lord God, less of me and more of you. And I pray, Lord God, that you touch the ears, minds, and hearts of the listeners, Lord God, so that they may receive from heaven and be blessed from this word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, on this previous Sunday, uh, our lesson title was 2022 Mindset. Amen. Um, and in that lesson, we learn uh, that your environment has a direct effect on your mindset. Amen. Your environment has a direct effect on your mindset. That's your surroundings. That's the people you're hanging with. That's the places that you're going to. Amen. It could be a job. Amen. Uh, two, uh, that in order to get the results you want, you must change your mindset or renew it, uh, which begins with you changing your environment. Amen. We talked about um, in order to renew the mind, which is the goal, you must first change your environment. Because if not, then you're going to quickly resort back to the old you. Amen. Um, and uh, third, once you have changed your environment, now you can successfully Renew your mind in the correct environment, which is the Word of God. How I many know that the Word of God is an environment? Amen. Uh, we oftentimes mention the kingdom. You know, we say that we're a kingdom or we say that we're a part of the kingdom, but this kingdom is invisible. We, it, 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 it's an it's a, a invisible realm, which is the spiritual realm that, that we are uh, constantly affected by. Amen. And the Word of God is how we gain access uh, to that kingdom or to that realm, amen. It's through his word. It's through his holy scriptures, amen. But we see the same illustrations uh, right here in the first uh, book of Psalms, amen. Um, verse 1 begins with, blessed is the man who. Uh, what follows are instructions on how to be blessed. Now, that is the goal. Right. We all want to be blessed in some way, form or fashion. And we know the significance of the blessing. Right. Everybody, we, we you know, even though it's kind of cliche ish when we say it, you know, you can walk up on somebody and, you know, you, you ask them how they are doing. They may say blessed. Now, uh, if that's the, whether that's the case or not, at least they have enough sense to know that they want to be blessed. Amen. Everybody wants to be blessed. 
uh, blessed by God anyway. Amen. Uh, but verse 1 um, starts off, blessed is the man who. Uh, what follows are instructions on how to be blessed. Verse, uh, verse 3 um, is the results or rewards uh, to following those instructions laid out in verses 1 and 2. Amen. Uh, so let's look at these verses closely. Uh, Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now notice in this passage, it did not deal specifically with sin, right? He did not say blessed is the man who does not sin, right? Because we already know this concept of being free from sin, but we also understand grace. But I want you to see that it does not deal with the actual sin, but the environment, the influence of sin, right? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, right? Who walks not in the counsel. Who are who are we listening to, right? What are we being influenced by? Who are we being influenced by? This is very important. Nor stands in the path with sinners, right? Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Walk, sit, stand, all of this has to do with an environment, right? The place you're walking, or, or the place you're standing, or, or the place you're sitting. It speaks to fellowship. Right. And this is this is what this passage is saying. Blessed is the man who has not who who does not fellowship with the ungodly, who does not fellowship with sinners or who does not fellowship with the scornful. Right. Because this is the environment. Right. And, 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 and once we enter into Christ, we understand that we are new creations. Right. But uh, to protect the new uh, that we have entered into, we must now uh, pay attention to our environments, right? Because uh, as I stated, uh, your environment has a direct effect on your spirituality. It's called influence. It's called peer pressure. Anybody uh, heard of peer pressure growing up, right? That's real, even so in adulthood, right? We are influenced by these things. So the Bible is telling us, listen, remove yourself from these environments, right? Don't, uh, 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 do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Those are people who do not know God. We ain't talking about people who reverence God. We ain't talking about people who may believe in God. We're talking about people who walk after his statutes, right? That, that, those are the godly. The ungodly do not walk according to his statutes. They may say they believe in God, right? They may say that they know that he exists, but it's a difference from actually committing, being devoted and committing to the ways of God. Amen. So the Bible is saying do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And that's the problem a lot of times. You know, and, and coming into this new year, we need to change our counsel. We know what counsel mean, right? That's the people who in your ear telling you stuff, right? And, and you know, uh, by, by us being Christians, we need to make sure that this council is Christian, right? Because we got to pattern our lives after uh, the Christian or the kingdom mindset. And, 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 and that be the hang up for a lot of people who really want to do right, who really want to get their life to Christ, who really want to see change. They haven't been effective in that change because they haven't been discipled in how to effectively go about this change, right? Because they go back to the same old places, they go back around the same old pe people with a renewed mindset. You know, we ain't saying that your mind wasn't renewed, but now you have took this new mindset back into the old environment, yeah. right? And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be suppressed. You know, time and time, you know, uh, coming up, before I was spiritually strong, that happened to me. You know, uh, you know, you find God and you're zealous and you, you know, you hyped up, you know, and you go back, you know, with good intentions, maybe to try to win some folks, maybe to try to tell some folks about Christ, but you're not 
strong enough. You're not prepared enough. You haven't been discipled. See, your mind, see, see you really haven't been transformed, right? Because transform is a process, right? You, you, when you're a babe, you haven't really been transformed yet, right? Trans, transformation takes time because it comes through the word. Right? We are given a clean slate. That's that new creation. When we, enter into, uh, when we enter into Christ Jesus, we get a clean slate. Right? Our, our slate is right clean. That's the concept of the new creation. To where God is not dealing with you according to the old you, according to your previous sins, nor the sins you may commit. He's looking at a new individual uh, washed clean with the blood. But this transformation is a little more complicated. Right? Because if you just accept Jesus Christ today, you can't expect to be a spiritual giant tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right? And, 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 and you know, um, and this, this problem uh, falls on the church because a lot of churches aren't doing a good job discipling people. They having a good church service. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And these pastors, you know, um, you know, and it's crazy because, you know, um, I'm a off subject, but, um, you know, when I first started ministering, I felt the need to be like other people, right? Because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted people to like my message, but that's why I messed up at. And, and God quickly dealt with me. It ain't for the people to like your message, but I believe a lot of pastors, um, um, develop their messages for amens, right? To, 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 to you know, sway the people. And, and even so, like, you got people who practice more charisma than actually studying the word and being, uh, you know, proper hermeneutics and, and exegesis and stuff like that. They practice more charisma, you know, the charm, the ah, <laughs> and all, you know, that, because if you pay attention, that is what arouses people. It's not the word. It's the charisma that arouses the people, especially the black church. But we got to come out of that, right? Because what we're doing is, is, is really just a, a entertainment, right? Well, we coming up and we getting hyped up, but we're not being edified. We getting up and we jumping up. Oh, hallelujah, you better say it and all this. And we jumping up, and, but, but, but we're not being edified, right? And, you know, uh, I, uh, I forgot where I heard this from, but it's true. The best, mess, the best sermons are the quietest ones because that means the word is penetrating. You ever been, you ever been uh, you know, in church and that pastor talking about some stuff that you need to hear because he covering some areas that you're weak in? It's hard to amen when, it's, when the message is, 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 you know what I'm saying, but see, that's what the church is for. I'm not here to make you say amen. I'm not here for that. I'm not here for you, your approval. I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please God. And until we grasp that, we're going to continue um, to have immature Christians. And this immaturity has nothing to do with sin, people. It just has a lot to do with discipleship. You're not disciple in the things of God, Right? So walk, stand, sit have to do with environments, right? And this speaks to fellowship, relationship, engagement, right? The Bible says that you can't fellowship with me and fellowship with demons, with the world. You know, the Bible says uh, 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 friendship with the world is enmity with God, right? But these concepts aren't explained in depth to new believers, Right. And and a bunch of other stuff as well. You know, I just I just feel like, you know, the Christian community can do so much more. Right. To really uh, to really cultivate the flock. Right. But we do not. A lot of us aren't disciples ourselves. Right. But see, f this fellowship and me and Pastor, we, we we talk about this a lot. Fellowship is the most important aspect of Christianity. It's not the teaching. It's not, you know, coming to church. It's fellowship. Fellowship is us coming around each other. That's fellowship. 
right? Because what happens is we come to church and we fellowship for this one and a half hour, but then the rest of our hours we are fellowshipping with the world. And we wonder why the world have a bigger influence on us than the kingdom, mm -hmm. right? But see, we're good with coming to church on Sunday. We're good with Wednesday. We're good with the construct that we got set in place, but it's not working, right? I mean, you know, Christians can have fun too. And you got a lot of these people, they don't want to come to the kingdom because they don't want to stop their fun. And their fun, fun isn't always devilish. You know, you, know, you got these, you know, Christians who, who just like to think that you can't enjoy yourself. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And that lie is keeping a lot of people from coming into the kingdom. No, we got to create our own fun for us. We shouldn't have to go to the world to have fun. The kingdom make enough money. Our money is not taxed. It's tax-free, tax-exempt money. If you look at all these churches, some of the revenue that these churches is pulling in, we could do a lot, a lot more for the community. We can have our own wrecks. We can have our own bowling alleys. You know what I'm saying? We can have our own little wing joints where we can come and, and, be, and be sure that the environment is kingdom because the kingdom set the environment. But when you don't have that, you're left with no choice but to fellowship with the world when you don't want to, but hey, I want to have fun, right? Just going out for some wings, but going out for some wings can turn into a lot of other stuff because of the environment, right? And fellowship, like I said, this is the most important aspect. We, we never really fellowship, right? Me and Pastor, man, we can, man, we link up, we talk. It can start out, we talking about football, basketball. No matter what, eventually we're going to get off into the kingdom, right? We're going to get to building each other, sharpening each other. I can call you, Brother Darren, and ask you, like, hey, you know, Brother Darren, you all right? And you can tell me so, but guess what? Th you know, and, and I might, I might, you know, that may be sufficient on the phone. But it's a difference when I'm in your presence. I can sense. You ain't finna just tell me you're all right, and I'm sensing otherwise. Right? And it's the purpose, the Bible say, uh, forsake not the assembly. That's the fellowship, right? When two or three are gathered, he's in the midst, Right? And this is the purpose of fellowship, right? Because we can sense of the spirit man get to work. And you, you speak of the spirit all the time. It ain't the man. It ain't the, it's the spirit because it is the spirit. But the spirit can only be effective when we're together. One of the best examples of the church is the first church in Acts. And, when, and, and uh, in the first three chapters, the most common phrase you see is together in one accord. If you go back and you read the book of Acts, right, them people was together in one accord. They did everything together. They even brought all their resources together. But see, we are so, um, you know, we are so selfish. You know, we, 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 you, uh, we think we're doing a kingdom thing, but we're so divided. You know, because it's all about us. My church, the big church. My church took all of, up all this money, so we want the recognition set apart from the rest of the kingdom. When that's not the kingdom. Paul said the arm can't say to the foot, I don't need you. Right? So we got to uh, uh, get do better with our fellowship. Amen? Um, but yeah, our environment has a direct influence on our spiritual man. Uh, if you, you ever met somebody with a jacked up personality? See, it's because of their environment. Either, e either now, present, or of old. They either came up in a jacked up environment, right? And it birthed these personalities. Your personalities are characteristics of your spirit man, right? That stuff that's so and, and face lifts and tummy tucks can't correct, right? That's you. That's your spirit, man. Your personality is you. Your characteristics is you, right? But based on the situation people are in, their personalities can be jacked up, right? Abusive situations or, you know, sexual abuse coming up or coming up in a violent uh, 
atmosphere or environment. You know, this, this can affect your personality. And, and your personality, again, are reflections of your inner man, right? We need to check our personalities because our personalities are which or, or that which confirms our spirit or, or, or confirms our Christianity. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and John 13 that you will know them by their characteristics. He didn't say characteristics. What did he say? Fruit. Fruit or characteristics. What are some of the fruit? Love, peace, wisdom, joy, uh, 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 patience, perseverance, long suffering. Those are characteristics. You know, when we talk about a person, or you know, you, we ask what are this, this person's strengths. When you go on an interview, that person want to know what are your strengths, what are your characteristics, especially if you want something like a manager position to where you're over people, right? But Jesus said you would know them by their fruit, which is their characteristics, which is their uh, personalities. Amen? So the spirit man, which is the mind, is influenced by his environment. This is why God is saying not to be in fellowship with these environments. You can be in fellowship, but you won't be blessed. Remember, it, it, it says blessed is the man who walks not, who fellowships not. So when you fellowship, you're not blessed. And that's what we want. We want to wonder why, dog, you know, what am I doing wrong? You know, Lord, I gave you my all. I gave you my life. You know, I read my Bibles. I might not read it every night. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing X, Y, Z. But yet, this, the things, the, the promises of God, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the things of God are not manifesting in my life. Amen? It's the fellowship. It's the influence by these environments that's suppressing uh, the things of God. Walk, stand, sit represents fellowship. Amen. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his laws he meditates day and night. Right? So, so, so he's, 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 he's giving you a new environment to be in, and it's the environment of the word. How, how, what you mean environment? When you open this word, you're entering into its environment. Its environment is entering into you. This is why study is so important. This is how you renew your mind and keep a renewed mind by placing your mind in the environment of heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. How do I experience that? We hear this. We, we, we hear this on earth as it is in heaven. How do I get heaven to manifest on earth? Through the word. Yeah. word. Through the word. Steady pursuit of God in his word. Uh, math, in, in the book of Matthew, I believe it's the 6th chapter and 28 verse. It says, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Right? And all these things will be added. Right? We don't seek the world. We don't seek the things of the world. We seek king, the kingdom and his righteousness. Right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Where is your delight? Right? Your desire. Do you delight in the things of God? Do the things of God bring you joy? And that's when you, that's, that's, that's evidence that you're being transformed, right? Because I done been in the kingdom, and even so, we must understand that we're still dealing with this flesh. So you, at, at some point of time, no matter where you at in your Christian walk, you still going to desire the things of the world. It's just our job to keep those desires suppressed. How do we keep them suppressed? By confronting it with the word. Amen. This is how we renew our minds in the word. But but we got to find joy in it. It got to be our desire. We got to desire it. Right. We can't approach it half heartedly. Right. We got to be to a place to where God shifts our desire to the point to where we yearn for the things of God. Amen. Um. Medit uh, meditation is a mental activity, right? The Bible says he meditates on it, uh, which God wants you to do consistently. He says day and night. That's consistent, right? And when you meditate on something, in, 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 in order for you uh, uh, to meditate, 
you must first study because you can meditate or reflect on, you, you can only meditate or reflect on something that's already put in your mind. You, you get that? And, and this speaks, uh, this speaks to the, 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 the purpose of studying. The Bible says study to show yourself approved, right? What we get on Sunday we can meditate the rest of the days on, but that don't mean we shouldn't open our Bibles after Sunday. I'm just giving you an illustration, right? Because, you know, we, we like to look at this stuff so hard, but it's not. Meditation is you can work and meditate. You can wash dishes and meditate. You know what I'm saying? You can be in your car and meditate. The, the, the question is, do you have something to meditate on? That's it. If you ain't, if you ain't got the right thing, you're going to meditate on something. It just may not be the right thing. And whatever you meditating on is, 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 is that which is consistent in your life. You see that? If your environment off, you're going to meditate on that environment, the things of that environment. You're going to be at work thinking about Friday so you can go step in the name of love and all that, which ain't nothing wrong with it. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know? Going, you know, going to the club or, you know, going to these places where we as Christians know we shouldn't be. Because of the environment, not that we can't have fun, it's the environment. You get it? Now, ain't that we can't have fun as Christians. I want to rebuke that demon right now. I want to pull that up by the root. Christians can have fun. Christians can enjoy themselves. But we live by a different standard than the world, right? So we, we, we just got to be very cautious. So, so, so guess what? If, if me having fun is going to jeopardize my spirit, man, I, I got to put the desire of wanting to have fun under subjection. Because I don't have a safe place where I can enjoy myself. Right? And, and it's a pity to me because I feel like the church is failing right there. Right? You advancing your facilities. For what? I mean, okay, like, you know, add some gyms. You know, add gyms. Add recreations. Uh, facilities on your campus to where the kingdom can come and shoot some ball, where these kids can come and they ain't got to worry about uh, being uh, victims of uh, being an innocent bystander or, or being influenced by the world if we offer them a solution. You get it? If we don't have that, then like I said, you know, they going to subconsciously or consciously, you know, gravitate to the world, right? So if you never read the word of God, then you can never really reflect on it. Right? So you can't meditate on it if you never read it. That's why we got to read the word. And most of your understanding come from the reflecting. It don't come when you read it. You will read it and be up there like, you know, you just reading it, but it takes time. We got to give the, the spirit time to work. We want everything now. We want to be transformed now. We want to be completely delivered now. But it ain't going to happen like that. Right? We got to trust God in the process. Right? So you got to read your Bible, open up. I, I, you know, I encounter a lot of people, and they say the reason why they don't read their Bible is because they don't understand. Well, I say, well, when you got into the sixth grade, you didn't understand the sixth grade curriculum, did you? When you got into the eighth grade, you won't understand eighth grade curriculum. Eighth grade curriculum had to be taught to you. So give it time. You new to it. Don't allow your frustration of not understanding keep you from opening your word and, 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 and reading it. And a lot of times, too, our minds are too cluttered when we're trying to read. You see that? That happens a lot of times, too, to where, you know, uh, uh, there's no intimacy when we're opening up. We just open it up just, you know. No. We got to make room. You know. We got we, we, we to make room physically and spiritually. And this is the purpose of renewing your mind. Getting rid of that stuff because this is God right here. People don't understand this. this you know, we, we, we like to enshrine this, but this is God literally. This is power. This is spirit. Right? 
And if we want this to get into us, we got to move some stuff around because, because the, uh, 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 God does not involve himself in chaos. A lot of times we want God to come into us, but it's a process to get you guys to clean yourself. Even once saved, that don't do it. <laughs> We like to think when a pastor lay hands on you from that point on, everything just going to be great. It's not. You got to apply yourself. If you never read the word of God, then you can never reflect on it. Reading and studying gives us the ability to reflect on that which we read and study. Medi meditating on the word has so many advantages for the believer. Right? It's our weapon of warfare. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but of principalities, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So when I engage my word, I understand how to engage these principalities. I first and foremost understand how to fight. I understand that, man, I'm fighting the wrong way Amen. because I learned this from opening my word. I, I, I learned that that flesh and blood is not my enemy, but it's the spirit that's controlling them or influencing them, yeah. right? So now I understand that. Now I understand how to combat that in the word, right? That's how I fight. How did, how did Jesus fight Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane? He did not pull out a sword and try to cut Satan's head off. He ain't throw them dukes up to Satan. He said, it is written. That's our warfare. It is written. Sometimes you got to speak to folks. That's what Jesus did to Peter. He said, Satan, get thee behind me. But he was talking to Peter. But he was talking to the spirit that was influencing Peter. Right? That's, that. That's why it's important to get in our word, to meditate on it. Because when, I, I, when, 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 when I'm constantly uh, uh, being reminded of the word, then I can act on the word. But if you inconsistent in your pursuit of the things of God, then how you expect to stand firm? One minute you're going to be Christian, one minute you're going to be like the world. Because there's no consistency. It keeps and covers us. Secondly, it keeps and covers us, the word. It keeps us because it's constantly reminding us. That's why we got to meditate on it day and night because we got to understand that we are still futile in our minds. Mm -hmm. This body is still corrupt, yeah. right? So if we don't keep ourselves in a, in, in a heavenly environment, we're going to slip up. Mm -hmm. We're going to fall. We're going to go astray, right? So when I'm constantly reading the word and I'm constantly reflecting and meditating on it, it's keeping me. Because it's constantly reminding me of my new identity, that I am a child of God, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because even in that, you're going to fall. The Bible says a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Why does he get back up? Because he ponders on the word. Because the word is in his heart. Mm -hmm. So he knows he can get back up. I ain't got to stay down here because I've been forgiven. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. Sin no longer has no jurisdiction in my life. So I, even though I fail, God is not dealing with me according to my fall. See, when you know that, when you done read that, now you can reflect on that. Now you can win that spiritual battle. Because, because a lot of times Satan want to come and condemn you. Because you're going to mess up. People hear me in 2022, you're going to mess up. But if you got the kingdom mentality, when you mess up, you're going to get up. And your mess up is going to be a setup for something greater. If you got a kingdom mindset, that's what I want to help you with, a kingdom mindset, where you can meditate on the things of God so that you can be ready when Satan comes. Yeah, I feel Satan, but you ain't finna get me. The Bible says it is written that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It is written that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. And guess what? You, you won that battle right there. After, after Jesus had and told him a, at, had and told him a few times, it is written. The Bible says he left for a season. Mm -hmm. He ain't left for good. Mm -hmm. You just warn that time. The Bible says, "Resist Satan, and he will flee." How do you resist him? You don't resist him by just saying, "I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I'm not listening." No, you resist him by the word. Now, nah, Satan is written. 
No, sir, it is written. You can get out of my head. I snatched down those thoughts because it is written. That man should not live off bread alone, but off every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But, but you, letting it, you letting him talk to you about what you need. And now you letting that lead you into a, 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 you know, a, a debt. Inconveniences in your life. Now, and we wonder why we mentally stressed. Because we ain't pondering on the stuff of God. You know what? I don't need that. I don't need that because the Bible says, Paul said that he learned to be content in whatever state he in. But if we ain't pondering on the word, the, the first little thing come across our, our, our path that speaks to our flesh, we want it. And that stuff is put, pulling us into ruts. Now we got to come to church for a financial breakthrough when you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be coming for a financial breakthrough because you should be in a place to where you can steward your things because you're not coming to God for stuff. Because you can't take stuff with you. Stuff cannot get you heaven. Stuff cannot prosper you. Amen. Three, it encourages us in the things of God. When we meditate on the word, it's encouraged. It's what the songs say, encourage yourself. You ain't got to wait to Sunday to be encouraged. And, and honestly, that's all that's being going on in most churches is encouragement. That's the problem. I don't need to tell you, pick yourself up. I'm going to tell you how to pick yourself up in the word. You know what I'm saying? Tell you what the words say there. You know what I'm saying? But see, you can, do, you can do that yourself. The Bible says that you need no man to teach you. That's what the Bible says. Because you got the teacher in you. But see, we ain't being taught that. We being taught to, to depend on our pastor. We being taught to depend on your prophet. You listen to your prophet. The God going to give it to you. The prophet, the prophet going to give it to you. That's a lie. If, if your man of God telling you that, he's not a man of God. You don't need no pastor. You don't need you. Yes, the Bible says for next, forsake not the assembly. I'm not saying that. But you don't need him concerning your salvation. You don't need him concerning the things of God. You got the spirit in you. And the spirit is better than any man. But that's what we teach because it's all about the pastor, the prophet. Right? But you can encourage yourself if you in the word. Right? You can encourage yourself when you're down. You don't need to, oh, I need to go to church because, you know. No, you need to open your Bible. You need to reflect on the things of God. This is why study is so important. We got to study. Verse 3. And this is the reward. This is the benefit of of, of, of following the instructions of one and two. Verses three. Once you've meditated day and night on the word, once you've changed your environment, once you um, walk not uh, in the counsel of the godly, nor sit in the seats of, of the scornful, once you've corrected all of that, verse three says, says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Look at that. These are the benefits of a person who patterns themselves after the things of God. It's simple. Obey God, and this is what you get. It's laid out in the Word, but we want to we wanna take shortcuts to get the things that's God's. No. In order to get the things that's God, you got to take the, 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 the route that he laid out. But see, that's too hard. Right? Because that requires us to break free from some stuff. We'll rather listen to that prophet that say, sow a $200 seed. That's easy than renewing my mind. I, I sow a $200 seed because I don't want to renew my mind. Thinking that $200 seed is going to manifest something in your life. The devil is a lie. Money cannot produce nothing heavenly. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
In order to get the things that God said you can have, you got to do the things God said you need to do. Simple as that. The Bible even tells us how to obey. It's no excuse. Tell us everything we need to do. We just got to apply it. And we don't have to do it perfect. God is just looking for the desire. Mm -hmm. To where you say, you know what, Lord, I'm trying you. And I ain't talking about trying. I'm talking about, Lord, I'm trying you. Mm -hmm. I'm through it. It ain't going to be perfect, but that's what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. See, we want to dip and dab like the buffet. Got God on this aisle, the world on this aisle. We want to get a little God and get a little world. And wonder why the world working more than God. But God don't mix. You got to change your desires. The Bible says his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord. Is your delight, is in the, is your delight in the things of God? And I ain't talking about the things of God, which is the prosperity. I'm talking about his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Doing what he say do is your delight in those things. Walking in love and in charity. Loving your brothers and your neighbor. Having compassion in your heart. Do you delight in those things, not the blessings? Because the blessings won't come until that's your posture. Until that's your heart. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, man, how do I get eternal life? He said, I did all the stuff. He said, oh, you did? He said, give all you got to the poor and follow me. He left the way sad because he had a lot, and that's what his delight was in. His delight was in the wrong thing. God was just exposing him because you didn't do the other stuff. The Bible says no one is perfect. No one does good. But one, and that's Jesus Christ, right? But God was revealing to him that his delight was in the wrong place. Rain, sleep, shine, uh, up, down, I'm going to do what the Bible say. I'm going to love, I'm going to have compassion, I'm going to love my neighbor. That's my heart, right? That's why the light got to be. When you do, as verse 1 and 2 instructs, you shall be like a tree planted. See, a, a tree ain't like, a, 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 ain't like other plants, flowers. See, they, they, they grow and they die by the season. But see, a tree planted, because those plants are planted too, but they're not like a tree. When a tree is planted, it's planted. I'm talking about it's planted. His roots run deep, and that tree is secured. He may, leave, he, he may lose his vegetation, you know, in the fall season, but it's going to come back because he's planted, right? Uh, the thing is to be a tree that's bearing good fruit. We are all trees based on a biblical concept of sowing and reaping, right? We're all trees. We're all plants. We're all branches based on that concept of, of sowing and reaping and fruit bearing, right? We see this over and over in the Bible. Uh, the thing is to be a tree that's bearing fruit or good fruit because there's bad fruit as well. Uh, we see this concept throughout the Bible. John 15, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Right? We see that concept there. Well, he's saying every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts it off. But every tree that bears fruit, he prunes it so, they can, so that it can bear more fruit. Matthew 21 and 19, uh, where Jesus cursed the fig tree. And that's a significant story. Uh, if you understand that story in Matthew 21, and it's in, it's in other Gospels as well. And this is when from afar off, Jesus Christ saw the fig tree. Mm -hmm. And the fig tree had leaves on it. So with the leaves, it put off the impression that it had fruit. And Jesus Christ approached the fig tree in expectation. But when he got to the fig tree, there was no fruit. And he cursed the tree, right? And that really uh, was a testament or a prophecy to Israel, right? Because Israel uh, were the chosen elect of God, right? And yet they, they put off these formalities. See, the leaves represented the formalities. Mm -hmm. To, hey, I'm godly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I sow seeds in church. Mm -hmm. I, I pay my tithes. I come into church. I sing in the choir. I urshat the dough. 
But those are just leaves. Mm -hmm. But you don't have fruit. Fruit is something you can't imitate. Mm -hmm. Fruit is real. You, you, I didn't, you didn't ever met people with leaves? Right? And see, 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 that's where we got to transition from, people. We got to, we as a body, we, me, us, we got to transition from being trees with leaves. Putting off the impression mm -hmm. that we got fruit or putting off the impression that we serve the Almighty, but we don't bear fruit. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. Not by their leaves, amen. Uh, Matthew 7, 15 through 20, Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. Amen. Uh, the tree that this verse describes is a tree that's in the perfect environment, right? Because it's not necessarily the treest environment that this tree is in. This, this, this tree is in the perfect situation. Why is this tree in the perfect situation? What is the one thing that all life forms need? Water. That's the one thing that all life forms need. And and, which comes from water. Yeah. This is why when, when studying other planets, they look for water because they feel that if there's water there, there's life form there, right? So water is the one thing that all life forms need. This tree is planted by rivers of water. Rivers is plural. It's not one, because one river might dry up. But when you plant it by multiple rivers, you're not worried about the rivers drying up, right? And that's the security that God offers. See, these world systems will fail you. Right? See, the devil give, give off the impression that you're successful in the world, but it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. And you will be up for the moment, but the next time you know, you hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. But God's saying, no, I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. Right? When you renew your mind and, 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 and you watch the filth of your mind of wanting to be up. And that's the problem. We come in the kingdom wanting to be up. That's when you ain't going to be up. God ain't going to bless you wanting a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. That's like want me for anterior, anterior motives, mm -hmm. right? You don't want me for me. Mm -hmm. You want me for my stuff. We got to stop coming to God for his stuff. And when we stop coming to him for his stuff, he'll give us his stuff because he'll know that ain't where our heart lies. Our delight, my delight ain't in God's stuff. Mm -hmm. Somebody say that, Lord, Lord my, delight my delight is not in your stuff, mm -hmm. right? But this tree is planted by rivers of water. That's his life source. He got all he need, rivers of living water. There you go. This water ain't just water. It's good water. <laughs> right? The, he told, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, he said, when you drink from this well, you will never thirst again. Because my water don't run dry. My well don't run dry. He said, not even that. He said, not only will you not thirst again, but you will become a well springing up. Living water, right? God don't run out. <laughs> he got plenty. Everything, every aspect of him is eternal, is everlasting, right? So the tree is planted by rivers of water. Every living organism needs water to survive based on his environment. And this is the thing, it's planted by the rivers. So other forms of vegetation, they depend on external sources to bring them water. They depend on it to rain, right? Or they, or they depend on someone to come, or they depend on the mist, or, or they depend on fog. You know what I'm saying? All of this is, is water, right? But not this tree. It don't have to rain for this tree. Right? It can be in a drought where it hasn't rained for, for weeks, but this water does not depend on the rain. It depends on the source, which is the rivers, because it's, the, by it being close to the water, most people back in the days when they was homesteading, back in the days, you know, in the cowboy days, in the western days, people wanted land close to a water source. 
right? Because the, the soil is good right there. And plus you're closer to the water so you can, you know, feed your, lock, your flock and whatever. And, you know, the vegetation is better because their roots are connected to that soil that's connected to the river. Amen? Water represents life. The river represents the source. So in one place, you got all you need. Right? In one place, the water represents life. Right? The river represents the source. In one place, you have all that you need. And that has to be our posture when it comes to God. This is why Paul said, I'm content in whatever so state I'm in. That's externally, right? Because guess what? Drought and famine going to come in this realm. But in the spiritual realm, I'm in overflow. Amen. Right? Because I've been transformed to the point to where I'm not swayed by the things of this world because I understand that it's temporary. Right? You got to get to a place David said in the book of Psalms that the Lord is his portion. Is God your portion? To the point to where you don't love nothing more than it. You don't desire nothing more than you desire it. Him. The word. God. You are my portion, Lord. I wake up thinking about you. I go, go asleep thinking about you. Right? I, 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 I look for ways to get closer to you. I look for ways to advance you, not myself. See, a lot of times we're looking for ways to advance ourselves, not God. We put God second. Once I advance myself, then, Lord, I advance you. But no, God has to be your portion to where you're trying to advance him. Because you understand when you advance him, he will advance you. Amen? Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Uh, coming into this new, this new year uh, and this new season, um, as I stated Sunday, we must get our minds right. Amen? And uh, we must prioritize the things.